Hey, Tony here. For today's 31 Days of Horror video, I'm going to do a comparison of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre 1974 versus the Texas Chainsaw Massacre remake from 2003. Um, I enjoy both of these films. Um, definitely the original Texas Chainsaw Massacre is one of my favorites. So today I wanted to take time just to kind of go over each film. So I did watch a documentary about Ed Gein several years ago and was really fascinated about his story and what all he had done. We have had some movies that are loosely based on what had happened. Um, the Silence of the Lambs, and then, of course, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre being two of them. Now, both of these versions of The Texas Chainsaw Massacre um, both occur August 18th, 1973. So both films do depict the same story, but in different ways and with different characters. So as the original story opens up, we do have five young people traveling in a van to go check on a grave site. Um, over the radio, we have heard that there have been some grave robberies in the area in this area of Texas and so um, one of the characters named Sally is wanting to stop by to see if maybe her grandfather's grave is one that had been opened up. So we do have a nice little atmospheric area of the town. A lot of townspeople there um, at the cemetery I guess checking on their um, loved ones graves and to me that set a really nice tone of the movie. It really does show the feel of um, the community there and um, just the way that everything looks in that town in that particular time of the year. Now these five young people that are traveling in the van, we have the driver whose name is Jerry. We also have um, Pam. We have Kirk. And we have Sally and her brother Franklin. Now Franklin is in a wheelchair. So as they're driving down the road, they do kind of smell a stench in the air from the local um, slaughterhouse. And so as they're discussing how bad the air is and about the slaughterhouse that they're passing by, they do notice that there is a hitchhiker on the side of the road that they decide to pick up. Once the hitchhiker's in the van, they do notice something very strange about him. You know, he does act kind of weird and he has a animal skinned type um, purse, I guess you would say, that he has some things in. Plus he does have a camera. So he does decide to take a picture of Franklin, which he wants to charge them $2 um, to keep the picture. And when they said that they're not interested in the picture, that it was kind of strange. The picture didn't even look good. Um, the hitchhiker sets the picture on fire. It kind of triggers him to a point to where he takes Franklin's um, pocket knife and he cuts Franklin's arm with it. At this point, they decide it's time to let the hitchhiker out. As the hitchhiker is getting out of the van, he's kicking and stomping at the van and he actually wipes his blood on the side of the van. So as they're stopping at this gas station, which is also a place that sells barbecue, they find out that there is no gas there at the gas station. So they're having to travel not too far away just to go to Sally and Franklin's old, I guess their grandfather's old farmhouse. And so that's their next location that they go to. So as they get to the farmhouse, they do go inside the farmhouse and notice that it's really run down. There's some bones hanging up. Um, there's some bones on the ground, but they decide that they're gonna stay there, I guess, for a little while, maybe just to rest. So Pam and Kurt decide that they're going to walk down to the old swimming hole and to take a swim, I guess, to cool off. When they get down to the swimming hole, they do see that it has run dry. And so they decide just to walk a little bit further. And as they're walking, they do see an old farmhouse that they go to. And they do hear a generator going so that they know that there must be some gasoline there. And so they, do, they go to see if they can figure out a way of maybe... Um, buying some gasoline from these people. So as they approach the house, they can't find anybody around in the area. So Kirk decides to go up to the door and knock on the door to see if anybody's home and decides to open the door and go inside. So as he's going inside, Pam just goes back to the swing just to rest, I guess, while Kirk goes to see if he can find somebody inside the house. Now, as soon as Kirk gets into the house and goes toward the hallway, he is greeted by Leatherface who um, knocks him to the ground hits him over the head with a mallet, and the next thing you know, Leatherface is dragging Kirk to the back. So when Kirk never does come back out, Pam decides that she's gonna go in, and she stumbles across a room to where it's um, got some chickens hanging from the ceiling, you know, in cages. There are bones all over the place. There are feathers all over the ground, and which pretty much terrifies her. And the next thing you know, it, Leatherface comes out, grabs her, and picks her up, and places her on a meat hook that's hanging on the wall right through her back. 
So she's squirming and trying to get off this hook. She does see that Kirk is there on the table and Leatherface is there um, cutting him up with his chainsaw. Now, as all of this is happening, we still have Jerry, Sally, and Franklin back at the old house. And Jerry decides that he's gonna go find out what's happened to them. You know, it is kind of getting darker. And so Jerry goes looking for them and goes across and sees that there is that farmhouse and decides to go see if he can find out where um, Kirk and Pam are. Now, as Jerry goes inside the house, he does go into the room, I guess it's a kitchen area, and hears some pounding from the cooler. And as he opens the cooler, he does see that Pam is inside the cooler trying to get out. Now, as Jerry is trying to figure out what's going on, Leatherface comes and attacks him. Now, back at the old house, we have um, Franklin and Sally trying to figure out what's going on. The van's lights are on, but there's no keys in the van and Sally really wants to go figure out what's going on and try to go find them so that they can get out of there. And Franklin is pretty well aggravated at this point and agitated. So as it's getting late, Sally decides it's time to go look for them and Franklin wants to go along. She wants him to stay behind, but they both end up going to search to see what's happened with everybody. Now, as they're heading through the woods, of course, Leatherface comes after them and captures Franklin in the wheelchair and kills him as Sally runs toward the, um, the old Sawyer house. As she's running toward the house, of course, Leatherface is chasing after her. Now, as she goes inside the house, she does run upstairs and enters a room where there is a old man and an old woman that have been deceased. Um, so she runs down the stairs and of course, Leatherface is down there and sees her. As she's running down the stairs, Leatherface is coming through the door and starts chasing her. So as he's chasing her, she goes back up the stairs and jumps out the second story window down to the ground and she apparently is able to get up and start running back toward the woods again. Now, as she's running through the woods, she's finally able to get back to the gas station that they were at earlier. And as she's inside the gas station, the gentleman that was there earlier um, captures her, gags her, wraps her up, ties her up, and knocks her out. He drags her to his truck and he starts driving toward the Sawyer family house. Now, as they're driving, of course, he's beating her with a broom handle. Um, poking at her, just taunting her, I guess, which has always been pretty creepy. Now, as he gets her toward the house, of course, the hitchhiker's there, who is actually a family member, and um, they go back to the house and drag Sally inside the house, all bound and gagged, and set her in a chair. Now, when she wakes up from um, being knocked out, she opens her eyes and she's there inside their dining room where we have the grandfather, who was the old guy that was upstairs sitting in a chair and they're at the family table. Now they drag the grandfather over, they slice Sally's finger open and they stick his, they stick her finger in his mouth and he sucks on her blood. Now she's all freaked out, her eyes are bugged out. She's um, screaming and moving and just acting all wild, which is probably the way that I would behave if I was in that situation. And they decide it's time to let grandpa do what he does best and that is to kill her. So they bring over a big round tub, put her head over it, and then give the grandpa uh, a little mallet to hit her over the head with. Of course, he's so weak and old, um, almost death-like, and he keeps dropping the mallet and dropping the mallet, but he does finally hit her over the head. Um, but as this is going on, she is able to escape because they have already unbound her hands. So as all this is going on, she's able to escape and run out toward the... Um, to, toward the woods again. Now, as she's out going toward the woods, of course, Leatherface and the Hitchhiker go after her and chase after her. And during this time, Leatherface is almost there at her to where she runs out into the road and a big truck is coming up. Now, this truck um, is there, stops in the middle of the road to help her. And she, um, as she's trying to get into the truck, of course, Leatherface is there. Now she's running toward the truck. Leatherface is there and starts, you know, cutting at the truck with his chainsaw. And um, so that she runs out into the road and another truck comes by to pick her up. She's able to get in the back of the truck and to escape all of this chaos. And that's pretty much how the ending of the movie is for this particular film. Now, as the 2003 film opens up, um, we are introduced with a... Um, 
kind of like a documentary style walkthrough of a crime scene and they're talking about what has happened in this particular house there in Texas. So we do have five youths. Their names are Morgan, Pepper, Kemper, Andy, and Aaron. And they're all driving through Texas. They have apparently just come from Mexico to where they've picked up two pounds of pot um, and a pinata. And now they're driving through Texas, heading to a um, Leonard Skinner concert. And during their travels, they do come across a hitchhiker on the side of the road, which is another similarity from the original. But this particular hitchhiker is a, a young woman and apparently she has been trying to get away from this area. Um, she's saying that they're all going to die. There's something terrible there. And as they're driving down through the van, this young woman takes a gun and blows her head off. So after she does that, of course, they stop the van to figure out what they're going to do. And they decide it's probably best to stop, find somewhere, and call the sheriff. So they do go to a gas station to where they do find someone there and they're told that the sheriff won't be able to be there for another hour. So um, they decide that they're going to drive to a uh, little farmhouse that they've seen off the side of the road. Now this little farmhouse or old mill is where they end up and as they're there at the old mill they do come across a little boy who um, seems kind of wild. He's got some messed up teeth and his name is Jebediah. So Jebediah does tell them that the sheriff is, I guess, drinking and is pretty much going to be useless to them. So as they're at the old mill, um, Kemper and Aaron decide that they're going to go see if they can find um, someone and they do stumble across a farmhouse. Now as they approach the farmhouse, they do um, go to the door and Kemper stumbles across a, a man in a wheelchair. Now, as Aaron's outside waiting to see what's going on, um, Kemper never does come back out. So Aaron goes inside and she does find the man from the wheelchair on the floor in the bathroom, I guess emptying his um, bladder bag. And she has a hard time getting him back up into the wheelchair. He's pretty much um, being real handsy with her. Um, and all this time, she's trying to figure out where Kemper's at. So Aaron's the first one to go in the house. And when she never does come back out, um, Kemper goes in after her to figure out where she's at. And as he goes inside the house, of course, Leatherface comes out and snatches him up. So as they're at the farmhouse, um, back at the old mill, the sheriff does show up. And um, he sees the body and just trying to figure out what in the world is going on. Pretty much kind of blaming them for the crime that has occurred. Um, he does ask for some help with wrapping the body up and they wrap the body up with some saran wrap all over the head and the body and they end up taking the girl and putting them in the trunk of the sheriff's car. Now when Kemper never does come back from the farmhouse, um, Andy and Aaron decide to go looking for him. Now as they're going back to the farmhouse, of course, Leatherface chases after them. Now as they go back into the farmhouse, Andy gets captured by Leatherface and gets his leg chopped off. Now Aaron goes back to the van to get some help and when they arrive, they find, she finds out that the sheriff has already been there and has already driven off. Now while they're there for a while, of course, the sheriff shows back up sees that they've um, had some pot in the van and decides that they've probably pretty much um, on drugs and troublemakers. Back at the farmhouse after Andy's leg was cut off, um, Leatherface takes him and puts him on the meat hook um, and salts the leg and wraps it up, almost like preserving meat. Now back at the old mill, the sheriff is trying to figure out what's been going on, what happened with the shooting. So he makes Morgan reenact what happened as far as the suicide and has Morgan put the gun into his mouth. And then Morgan takes the gun out and points it toward the sheriff, like he's gonna shoot the sheriff, and actually pulls the trigger. Of course, the gun has been unloaded, and at this point, the sheriff knows that Morgan would have killed him um, if there had been bullets in the gun. So the sheriff ends up um, handcuffing Morgan and taking him to the farmhouse. Now, as they're heading to the farmhouse, Leatherface comes back to the old mill and starts um, chasing after Aaron and Pepper, who are in the car. And during all of this, of course, Pepper gets killed by Leatherface. Now, as Leatherface has killed Pepper, Aaron starts running toward the woods and stumbles across an old camper. She goes inside the camper where there's, there's, where there's two ladies there, um, asking to use the telephone. She needs help and they give her a hot tea, which apparently was drugged. So as she's being drugged with this hot tea, um, she does hear a telephone ring, so that she does know that the um, ladies have been lying about not having a telephone. As she's going toward the back, she does see a little 
uh, a little baby there and was trying to figure out where in the world the little baby came from. At this point, she's realized that this baby has been kidnapped and stolen from a family. So at this point, she's passed out and ends up being taken back to the farmhouse. When she wakes up from being drugged, she's there where um, Andy has been hung up on the meat hook. She goes up to him. She tries to help him off the meat hook. Of course, she doesn't have enough strength to do that. Of course, Andy's too weak to do it. So Andy asks her to kill him. So um, Aaron takes a knife and jabs him in the stomach and he bleeds out. Now, soon after this, she does find Morgan. Um, Morgan has been um, beaten and is, can hardly get around. And at this point, Leatherface has showed back up and um, the little boy named Jebediah comes and helps Aaron and Morgan escape. So after they escape, they run toward a abandoned house. And in this house, they're kind of hiding in closets, trying to um, hide from Leatherface. Of course, Leatherface is going to get through the door. Um, he snatches up Morgan, hangs him up, who, you know, I guess Morgan still has the handcuffs on, um, hangs Morgan up with his handcuffs over the chandelier and takes the chainsaw and just rips him up um, through the crotch, up through the belly and kills him. And Aaron runs and heads toward the abandoned meat plant. Now, when she arrives to the meat plant, she starts um, going through, trying to find a place to hide. She hides, I guess it's not an abandoned meat plant because there's meat there. So she does hide in the meat um, as Leatherface comes through trying to find her. Um, the meat is being um, run through, I guess, the, um, the chain system where the meat goes up and down the rows. Um, she finally runs away and hides in the locker. She taunts Leatherface by beating on the locker and apparently she's hidden a pig inside one of the lockers. So when Leatherface opens that locker and the pig comes out, um, she comes out of the other locker and is able to cut Leatherface's um, arm off. So she's able to escape the meat plant. She runs toward the road and a truck comes and saves her, which is very similar to the way that the um, Sally got saved in the original movie. So when the trucker drives off, he ends up going to that same gas station and um, Aaron tells him, no, don't go there, don't go there. And he goes there anyways. And of course, she um, knows that what's going to happen. So when he goes and distracts the people, Aaron gets out of the truck and goes to the window. She sees what's going on inside. She goes around as all this is being distracted and she's able to grab that child from the woman and get the child and get into um, the sheriff's car and drive off with him. So as she's getting in the sheriff's car, which we don't see, um, the sheriff goes to the big rig thinking that that's where Aaron's at. And when he goes up there, um, he sees that she's not there. Of course, she's gotten in the um, sheriff's car and she's able to run the sheriff over. So she runs him over, she backs over him, and then runs over him again. So even though there's a lot of similarities between both of these films, there is one that I like more than the other, but there's aspects of the other one that I do enjoy. So which one do I like the best? That would be the original um, 1974 version of the Texas Chainsaw Massacre. The reason why I like it is, of course, it's the original. I usually pretty much prefer the original because that's where the story um, began. If the story is that good and they're able to do a remake from it, then you know the original is pretty a pretty good um, film. So the similarities between both of these films is, of course, that there's five young people involved. Um, there's a farmhouse. There's a gas station that they stop at. There is a hitchhiker that they pick up. So there are a lot of similarities between both of them. Now, what do I like about the 2003 remake? Um, what I like about this one in particular is the, the kills. I do think that we see a lot more of Leatherface in this particular film, which is always fun. Um, I do like the action scenes, the killings, um, how graphic that this one was. So I do enjoy aspects of that. Now, which leather face do I think looks the best? Of course, I think that this leather face looks the best is probably the scariest. I do like the fact that there was a backstory to this particular leather face. Um, his name was Thomas Hewitt. We actually get to see what he looks like without the mask. And we also get the backstory of how he has a skin disease and that that's why he wears a mask. So I thought that was pretty interesting as far as this particular movie. Leave me a comment below. Let me know which of these films that you prefer. Do you like the original over the remake? And if so, why? 
I really do enjoy reading your comments.